the one word you have to remember that is the contralateral that means the right sided fiber defect will give rise to the left sided visual field defect this whole eye will be defective that means the patient will have monocular vision loss quadrantopia means quadrant of vision loss that means like in the optic tract there were half of the vision were lost but over here hello dear doctors lab exam has become harder competitive and very challenging for you as gmc has declared that lab one is going to be replaced with ukmla from 2024 so you have to take very effective preparation rather than the traditional preparation for PLAB. So we are running SS PLAB or UPMLA course very successfully and I have come forward with a sample lecture from ophthalmology. So visual field defect is a five star topic and definitely in the real exam you are going to get at least two questions from there. So stay with me and I hope and believe that you will give the full benefit from this lecture. So let's start. So before starting to know about visual field defect, you have to know the visual pathway. So I have put a diagram for you. So this is the left right eye and this is the left eyeball. And from the eyeball, this is the optic nerve which is coming down. And the two optic nerves which are coming down from the left and right side of the eyeball and they are crossing over here and this crossing is called the optic chiasm. Clear? So this is the eyeball, this is the optic nerve and then they are crossing and making this optic chiasm. And after the optic chiasm, this is the optic tract. And this optic tract is coming down in the lateral geniculate body. And from the lateral geniculate body, the fibers are coming down in the optic radiation and then finally in the visual cortex. So this is the usual visual pathway. So now I have make a visual field. So for the field of vision, you have to understand from the nose or nasal side. So if this is the field of vision in front of your eye, so this side of the vision which is close to your nose is called the nasal field of vision. And this side of the vision which is close to your temples, this is called the temporal field of vision. So this is the nasal field of vision and these two sides are the temporal field of vision. Okay. So you see in the eyeball, I have put the optic nerve fibers, I have given two colors. So the green colors are the temporal fibers and the orange colors are the nasal fibers of optic nerve. Now, these orange fibers of the optic nerves are actually carrying the temporal field of vision. And these green fibers of the optic nerves are responsible for the nasal field of vision. Similarly, on the right side, the orange fibers are carrying the nasal field of vision. You see the nasal field of vision are carrying over the uh, orange fibers and this temporal field of vision which are green color. Uh, so these green fibers are carrying the temporal field of vision. So now we already know the visual pathway. Now for the defects, let's go to the visual field defect. So for the visual field defect, that means if there is any lesion in any of this visual pathway, what will happen? So we will start from here. So that is the optic nerve. So if there is a lesion over the here, that is the optic nerve, what will happen? So you see optic nerve fibers, if the both fibers that the green and orange fibers are being damaged due to any reason, so it will give rise to what? This whole eye will be defective. That means the patient will have monoocular vision loss, complete loss of vision, right? Because both the fibers are being cut over here in the optic nerve. So for the optic nerve damage will give rise to the same side monoocular vision loss. Now get down from the optic nerve. This is the optic chiasm. So in the optic nerve damage, what will happen? There will be monoocular vision loss that means the left eye will be or the right eye will be completely blind 
Now we are moving down, that is the optic chiasm. So optic chiasm or the crossing, what will happen if there is any defect over here on the crossing, right? So if there is a defect in the optic chiasm, what will happen? Let's follow the fibers which are being crossed over here in the optic chiasm. So the green fibers from the right side, right eye is carrying the temporal field of vision from the right eye. Similarly, you see the orange fiber which are crossing over here in the chiasm is carrying the temporal field of vision from the left side. That means both eye will have temporal field of vision defect. This type of defect is called bitemporal, bitemporal hemianopia. So bitemporal hemianopia will be the defect due to the optic chiasma damage. So for the bitemporal hemianopia that is due to the optic chiasma defect, what will happen? Both side temporal field of vision will be lost, right? So this is the bitemporal hemianopia. Now you have to know a bit further, you know, from here in the optic chiasm, the bitemporal hemianopia, there are two main cause of bitemporal hemianopia. One can be the craniopharyngioma, a second one can be the pituitary tumor. So if this is the pituitary gland, which is sitting over here, and this is the craniopharyngioma, is sitting over there. So if the pituitary tumor is big enough to compress this optic chiasm in this level, it will give rise to this type of visual field defect that is called the bitemporal hemianopia. Now dear doctors, listen very carefully. This pituitary gland which is compressing the optic chiasm is actually compressing the inferior fibers of the optic chiasm. And the inferior fibers of the optic chiasm is actually responsible for the superior or upper field of vision. So now the craniopharyngioma, which is coming from the cranium, is pressing the optic chiasm in the upper part or a superior part of the optic chiasm. So craniopharyngioma is pressing the superior fibers of the optic chiasm. And over here, the pituitary gland or pituitary tumor is compressing what? The lower fibers of the optic chiasm. So now dear doctors, listen very carefully. The upper fibers of the optic chiasm is actually responsible for the lower field of vision. And the lower fibers of the optic chiasm is responsible for the upper field of vision. So now what happens? In craniopharyngioma, which is pressing the upper fibers of the optic chiasm and these upper fibers of optic chiasm is actually responsible for what? The lower field of vision. That means in craniopharyngioma, the lower field of vision will be more affected than the upper field of vision. And similarly for this pituitary tumor, which is pressing the lower fibers of the optic chiasm and these lower fibers is actually responsible for the upper field of vision. So that's why in pituitary tumor, the upper field of vision will be more affected than the lower field of vision. Now recap, pituitary tumor, lower fiber, upper field of vision, and so craniopharyngioma, upper fibers, and lower field of vision. Clear? So now we are coming down from the optic chiasm, that is the optic tract. So if there is any defect in the optic tra tract, what will happen? So defect in the optic tract, very simple. We will just follow these orange fibers which are crossing in the optic tract. So the orange fibers of the right eye is taking or carrying the field of vision of the nasal side of the right eye. So right eye, nasal fibers, is, is being damaged over here in the optic tract. And similarly, the orange fibers, which is coming from the left eye, you see the left eye, these fibers are coming down, coming down. So this eye in the left eye, there it is the temporal field of vision will be lost. So if any lesion in the optic tract, 
that will give rise to the visual field defect that is called the homonymous hemianopia that is homonymous hemianopia what is that mean homonymous means the same side same side that means you see in the left eye that is the left side of the vision and in the right eye also the left side of the vision will be lost so optic tract damage will give rise to the homonymous hemianopia homonymous hemianopia from the name of homonymous hemianopia homo means same side hemi means half that means same sided half of the vision will be lost that is the reason it is called the homonymous hemianopia now you see in the optic tract so this is the right sided optic tract defect you see in the visual field we have already learned that the in the left eye there will be the left sided vision loss and also in the right eye there will be the left sided vision loss that is called the homonymous that means the same sided vision loss but the defect is on the right optic tract that means right optic tract damage left homonymous hemianopia and similarly left optic tract damage will give rise to right homonymous hemianopia so the right optic tract damage will give rise to left homonymous hemianopia so that is the left homonymous hemianopia now we are coming down in the optic radiation so the fourth defect will be on the optic radiation so any defect in the optic radiation what will happen so any defect in the optic radiation will give rise to the homonymous quadrantopia so what is homonymous quadrantopia quadrantopia means quadrant of vision loss that means like in the optic tract there were half of the vision were lost but over here not the half that is the one fourth of the vision will be lost and similarly like the optic tract if the lesion were on the left side or right over here like this if the lesion is in the right side of the optic radiation the defect will be on the opposite side that means left sided homonymous quadrantopia that means one fourth of the vision will be lost so that is called the homonymous quadrantopia now for the quadrantopia there is another thing you have to know that is called the pits pits yes so what is this pits? Pits for parietal inferior temporal superior. So dear doctors, this optic radiation, which are the nerve fibers, which are crossing, some of the fibers are crossing in the parietal lobe and some fibers are crossing over the temporal lobe. So what does that mean by the parietal inferior temporal superior? That is the fibers which are located in the parietal lobe, which are responsible for the inferior quadrant of vision and similarly the fibers which are carrying the temporal lobe these fibers are responsible for the superior quadrant of vision so if there is superior homonymous quadrantopia that means the fibers which are damaged in the temporal lobe and similarly if there is inferior homonymous quadrantopia that means the fibers are damaged where in the parietal lobe so you see in this picture we have already learned that the right sided optic radiation is giving rise to the left sided homonymous quadrantopia and you see in this picture if this is the superior homonymous quadrantopia so definitely where is the lesion will be yes that is the temporal lobe so that is the mnemonics for the location of the uh, quadrantopia that is the parietal superior parietal inferior and temporal superior so say with me radiation pits radiation pits 
parietal inferior, temporal superior. So now for the final part that is the fifth point that is the if there is any lesion in the visual cortex or the occipital cortex. What will be the lesion? The name of the lesion will be similarly number five that is the homonymous hemianopia. But there will be macular sphere because the macular fibers are not present over here in the visual cortex. So in the visual field, visual cortex or occipital cortex, any defect in the visual cortex or occipital cortex is giving right to rise to the homonymous hemianopia with macular sphere. So if this is the macula, the visual field defect, the macula will be sphere. So dear doctors, just remember below this optic chiasm or the crossing, any lesion below this crossing or optic chiasm like over the optic tract or in the optic radiation or in the visual cortex will give rise to homonymous hemianopia or quadrantopia or whatever the macular sparing. Remember one word from this that is the contralateral. The one word you have to remember that is the contralateral. That means the right-sided fiber defect will give rise to the left-sided visual field defect. That means the right-sided optic tract damage is giving to the left-sided homonymous hemianopia and the right-sided optic radiation is giving rise to the left-sided superior homonymous quadrantopia and similarly the right-sided visual cortex damage is giving rise to what? Left-sided homonymous quadrantopia, homonymous hemianopia with macular sphering. So you have always remember that the visual field defect below the optic chasm is giving the contralateral visual field defect. So for the final box for today is that tract equal to incongruous and radiation or the visual cortex equal to congruous. So this is the final box you have to know from the visual field effect. So the congruous means complete and incongruous means incomplete. So now any defect in the optic tract is giving rise to the incongruous defect. That means the incomplete defect. That means not the full part of the visual field will be lost. There will be incomplete loss of visual field. So this type of field defect is saying the incongruous defect. So incongruous equal to tract. And similarly, the radiation and visual cortex defect is giving rise to the congruous. That means the complete loss of the field. So just let's summarize the visual field defect. So optic nerve monocular vision loss on the same side. Optic chiasm is the bitemporal hemianopia. Optic tract is contralateral homonymous hemianopia and we just learned that the lesion will be incongruous and now for the optic radiation that will be similarly contralateral homonymous quadrantopia and that is the pits that is the parietal inferior temporal superior and finally the visual cortex will give rise to the contralateral homonymous hemianopia with macular sphering. I hope that this lecture on the visual field will have a tremendous benefit in your real exam as you're definitely going to get two to three questions from this lecture. So in SS Academy we are running SS PLAB or UKMLA course very successfully. So I'm Dr. Tamanna one of the PLAB on mentor of SS Academy under Kumuntu Sar's guidance. I'm going to train you teach you for your playbone exam and get your success in your first attempt. Thank you very much.